On June the 23rd, Britain decides whether it is to remain a member of the European Union. So here, away from the spin and the scaremongering, are eight things to consider about Brexit before voting in the European referendum. One, sovereignty, essentially, is the idea that all of the laws that govern this country are made exclusively by this country. However, the European Union depends on 28 different countries working together to make the best decisions for the collective. Although we elect members of the European Parliament, we don't elect members of the European Commission, and it is the Commission who proposes European legislation. So we don't have any democratic say on who carries out the day-to-day -day running of the European Union. The EU's attitude to sovereignty and democracy was recently called into question with regards to Greece. What do you say to the Greek electorate whose democracy you've just more or less trashed? The Greek authorities commit not to introduce any legislation in the Greek Parliament unless they have the approval of the institutions. The UK is a member of other international institutions aside from the EU, institutions such as the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund, or indeed NATO. So, with our sovereign decision making already being affected by our membership of other international institutions, you have to wonder how much sovereignty we would gain just by leaving the European Union. To the Economist, they pointed out too that the UK is party to 700 trade deals and various alliances of which they have limited, they have to naturally limit your sovereignty in a sort of relationship But there's, like no, there's no leaving the EU, just like there's no suddenly a situation where Britain is going to declare globalization is, has, has ended and they're going to be an isolated island without any trade deals at all in the world, no IMF, no World Bank, no GTP. But if you think the EU needs democratic reform, or if such reform is even possible, then the question is whether that is more likely to happen with Britain inside or outside of Europe. Two, do you remember that referendum from a couple of years ago? Unlike England, polling currently suggests that Scots are voting to remain in the EU. Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has said that it would be a democratic outrage if Scotland was dragged out of the European Union against its will, and said that there would be an overwhelming demand for a second referendum on Scottish independence. If the UK overall votes to leave the EU but Scotland doesn't, would that definitely trigger a Scottish referendum? Almost certainly, I, I think that would be the demand of, of people in Scotland. Brexit will put uh, uh, the United Kingdom in an extraordinarily difficult position of trying to establish a place in the world. No doubt it's possible, but right at that moment, uh, I think Scotland will say, well, you're faced with a choice between London and Europe. We'll choose Europe. Three, there are also worries about how this will affect Northern Ireland. There has been a fragile peace there for nearly 20 years, and there are now worries about how Brexit might affect the delicate dynamics at play. Northern Ireland's frontier with the Republic of Ireland would become Britain's only land border with the European Union. Now, with the Leave campaign saying that we need to take back control of our borders, will any stricter borders increase pre-existing tensions there? Four. One of the big talking points has been trade deals, such as TTIP, a proposed trade deal between the EU and the United States. Most free trade deals, like TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership, give investors the right to trigger ISDSs, that's Investor State Dispute Settlements, if they want to challenge government decisions affecting their investments. This completely bypasses the normal legal system Absolutely. we have, right? So yes, and there is not even a duty for a company to first go to the domestic jurisdiction. They just can bypass and go to this arbitration system. You have heard about the Philip Morris cases, can you raise your hands if you have? The company is threatening to take the Australian government to an international court and says that removing brands from cigarette packs will lower the value of its trademark and intellectual property. That's right, a company was able to sue a country over a public health measure through an international court. The use of ISDSs has flourished in the last 20 years, and campaigners are worried that they increase the potential for corporations to influence government decision-making. Almost 75% of all suits filed in ICSID's history were filed in the last decade. This is the era of investor state disputes. Also, two ISDS challenges have already been raised in the UK. So, leave the EU and avoid TTIP? Well, it's not quite as simple as that. 
Besides, even if we're outside the EU, it sounds like politicians such as Boris Johnson are rather pro-trade deals like TTIP. He says, There is absolutely nothing not to like about the TTIP. As Churchill might have said, it is altogether unsordid. And yet virtually the only commentary we have been offered is absurdly hostile and misinformed. The debate is dominated by left-wing misery guts. Anti-globalization campaigners. 5. As recent painful experience shows, a weaker economy means fewer jobs and less money in people's pockets. Economic forecasts are never certain, however, it is clear that many independent bodies have arrived at the consensus that Brexit would cause a short, sharp, negative effect on the British economy. And in the short term, there is also a risk of an adverse market reaction to a Leave vote. The Leave campaign says that Britain will be better off in the long term. There are challenges in the global economy. My view is that those challenges will be easier to meet, those risks will be less if we vote to leave. But it's unclear how long it will take to get there. The EU is Britain's largest trading partner, and whilst Britain is a big market for Europe, it is far less dependent on us. 6. The EU has certain basic minimum requirements for employment law. Now, were we to leave the EU, any UK government would be able to repeal any of those rights that it was opposed to. And Conservative Leave campaigners have said that they do oppose some of those rights. It, it's you, an economic why issue. should people trust you on these EU social protections that they would remain if we came out since you voted against them all when they were being proposed? Seven. Immigration has been one of the biggest concerns for many voters. And 60% of the population think that we have too many immigrants in the country. But if you had to guess, what percentage of the current British population is made up of EU immigrants? Well, if you're like the respondents to a recent Ipsos Mori survey, you'll have guessed around 15%. That would be 10.5 million people. In actuality, the figure is much closer to 5%, which would still be 3.5 million people. So, what does it mean when so many people seem to be concerned by immigration, but their concerns are often based on inaccurate facts? Have the media let us down here? 8. Should the UK leave the EU, it will become the first country to do so, and this means that there is a lot of uncertainty about how the EU will react. The rhetoric has not exactly been encouraging. Here's President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. Deserters won't be welcomed back with open arms. If the British say no, and I hope they don't, European community life won't go on like before. The UK will have to accept it'll be considered a third party and one we won't suck up to. If the British leave Europe, both us and them will have to bear the consequences. This isn't a threat, but our relationship won't be as it is today. The fallout from leave would not be quick, and negotiations for our exit would take at least two years. And there's no template for it. We could stay in the single market, or we could leave it entirely. Most people would agree that we want to keep free movement for ordinary workers and students, not just high earners. We also must ensure the creation of more secure and quality jobs and preserve and improve employment rights, as well as environmental and consumer protections. Nobody on the side of leaving the EU has got any concrete answers about how that could be done. But we can safely assume it will be a Conservative government leading the negotiations. There's a huge amount we haven't been able to cover, so we've linked to some very useful resources in the description box below. And if you found this video at all useful, please share it so that more people can see it before they vote this week on the 23rd of June. Possibly the most powerful thing is finding out that other people are actually going, no, I think it's pretty shit too. So do I! <laughs> you know, and then you actually get people who can come together and go, let's do something about it then.